What's the trashiest wedding you've been to? Story one. Woo boy, this is my time to shine. So my uncle was a preacher but also owned a restaurant. A 16-year-old got married to her 17-year-old boyfriend in the back room. Her name was Candy. After the ceremony, she opened her wedding gifts like it was her birthday. One of the waitresses, Brenda, had given her her old lingerie as a gift. I remember during the reception, Candy went out back to throw the lingerie into a dumpster while Brenda sang, These Boots Were Made For Walking on karaoke. For their honeymoon, her mom bought them a room at the Holiday Inn around the corner, but they got bored, so they came home. Story two. Ooh, I've got one. Okay, so the bride was my older cousin. We were all from the Midwest, but she's been living with her family in a small town in the SC. Approximately 20, 30 family members flew a drive-in from out of state one two-way across the country. This was going to be her first marriage to a man that was not the father of any of her four children, each from different fathers. This was the middle of summer in the American Southeast. So hot a muggy. To skip forward a bit, there was no air conditioning at the family home, the motel, the church, or the reception hall. So everyone was sweating in their nice clothes the whole time. I'll start by our motel. Some of the parents were going to have their own rooms, and the kids and two older kids were going to be in their own room. The first thing that happens is that the kids get locked in the room. A previous tenant had bashed in the doorknob, so they couldn't open the door once it closed behind them. We tried picking up the phone to call the front desk, but the phone's cord and jack had been ripped out of the wall. Some of the younger kids were freaking out because of all of the palmetto bugs flying around the room. Motel staff ended up breaking the window because the window was painted shut and then never offered to move the children into another room until we asked for it. When we got together at the bride's parents' home, the bride's dad, my uncle, and amusingly my godfather, never got up from his recliner, even though we hadn't seen him in more than ten years, where he was watching VHS tapes of late 80s WrestleMania. He had an apple box next to the sofa heaping full with empty Miller High Life cans. First, we found out that two of the groomsmen couldn't attend the wedding because they were arrested for candy distribution. So one of my older cousins was recruited to replace one of them because he was about the same size so he could fit in the rented suit. We then found out that two of the bridesmaids couldn't attend the wedding because they couldn't get the day of work from the Kmart. So since we were already down one groomsman, we only needed one replacement bridesmaid. The trouble was, nobody would fit the rented dress. So one of my cousins was recruited to stand with the bridesmaids with the dress draper over her shoulder. We get to the actual ceremony, and it turned out nobody bought a unity candle to light turning the ceremony. So the minister sent his wife to Kmart to pick up a $1 plain white candle. The ceremony started before she got back and paused for a very long feeling tenish minutes until she came back with the candle. The bride's flow bouquet was a very fake-looking potted sunflower. After the ceremony, we went to the reception. There were not going to be any beverages provided until the bride's mom, my aunt, my dad's sister, this will be important later, used their refrigerator rent money, they didn't own their fridge, to buy a couple of cases of Sprite. At the reception, they asked me to be the DJ. They knew I worked at a record store, so they thought I'd be a good DJ, apparently. The groom, last minute, decided he really wanted a limo for the wedding, so they canceled the DJ they had and rented a limo. More on this later. To take the DJ's place, they put a boombox up on a table in the corner of the hall and gave me their CDs. My heart sank when I looked through their CDs, all country or rap, so I started playing music from the artists I knew, and everything skipped. The CDs were stacked without cases, and people just slid them back and forth across each other when looking through them. Apparently, they also had a party the night before where they got thrown around. Bottom line is, the only two CDs that didn't skip were a Leanne Rhymes CD and The Doctor. Do little soundtrack, so I just switched between those two albums. Then the limo arrived, a 70s-looking Cadillac, smoking. After a few minutes of trying to figure out what was going on, they opened the hood, and there was a fire under the hood. At this point, people are pretty hungry. The bride comes over to thank my parents for the gift, and that food was on the way, and said something like, and there was enough money left over that I could get these beautiful acrylic nails. As the wedding gift, my parents gave them dollar one hundred fifty to use for food, since there wouldn't have been food otherwise. The food arrives. It's one nine x 13 aluminum pan of baked beans, and one 9X13 of fully cooked but still partly frozen chicken wings from her friend's catering company. The groom's family rushes the food and took it all. There was zero food left for anyone from the side of the family that traveled 1,000 miles and actually paid for the food. After about three hours of country and rap, 
My aunts and uncles that have traveled in and are all of German heritage wanted to dance to one polka. So one of my aunts went to their car, and they had actually brought along a tape with the song on it. After getting the go-ahead from the bride, the song is started, and within seconds the groom's entire side goes, Oh, he'll no, and leaves. Every single person. So now it's just the wedding party and the bride's side of the family left at the reception hall. They had to leave the hall clean, so we all started to pitch in and clean. Meanwhile, everyone notices the bride's dad sitting alone at the bar, drinking his own booze. My dad has always resented him for marrying his sister and them moving the family so far away to live near the military base he was discharged from, and then basically giving up on life, becoming an alcoholic, and let the family live a really low-income life feeding off his disability. Seeing him just sit while the rest of the family cleaned upset my dad, so he walked over to ask him to help the family clean. Nobody heard what they said to each other until we heard a crash of a bar stool hitting the floor. We looked over, and my dad's holding him up off the ground by the back of his suit jacket, like holding a puppy by the scruff of its neck. My dad was a bigger guy, worked in a factory for 30 years, an EMT and fireman, grew up a farmer, played high school football, etc., but was a teddy bear in terms of temperament. My uncle Godfather was maybe 120 pounds wet. My dad put him down, pushed the broom up to his chest until he grabbed it, and walked away. My uncle started sweeping to everyone's shock, having never seen him work a day in his life. After we cleared out and locked up the reception hall, my family went to a KFC for dinner since we hadn't had anything to eat all day, even after technically paying for lunch. We originally tried Denny's, but there was a sign on the door that they were closed so that the staff could have dinner. When we got back to the motel, there was a message waiting for my dad asking if he'd after butchered a snake. One of my aunts slash uncles slash cousins who traveled in brought their little dog. During the ceremony, it was left behind at the bride's parents' house, but somehow managed to open the rear sliding door and went outside. The back of the property had a narrow waterway running behind it. A large snake had terminated and was trying to swallow the small dog. Someone terminated the snake by bashing its head and they called my dad, the avid hunter and former farmer who did have to slaughter the occasional animal, to try to get the dog out of the snake so it could be buried. He said no. The next day was gift opening at the bride's parents' home. As they started opening gifts, many of them personalized, they noticed a pattern. Their last name was misspelled on almost every item. It turns out that the friend who offered to print their wedding invitations with their color dot matrix printer as their gift spelled the groom's last name wrong, and they didn't want to upset the friend and ask her to reprint. So everyone who used the invitation as the guide for how to spell the personalized gift had it spelled wrong. In the end, the groom also got arrested and sent to prison for his connection to the same incidents that lead to the two groomsmen's candy distribution issues, and the marriage was annulled. But the bride kept his last name. Story 3. A friend of the family is a wedding photographer. We went to dinner with her family a few weeks ago, and she explained the most bizarre wedding she had ever been to which happened to be that same day and involved someone we all know, asterisk. Wedding was behind a trailer in a trailer park, asterisk folding chairs clearly labeled property of school. There were two church pews and several five-gallon buckets turned upside down, asterisk. Some of the wedding party arrived on riding mowers, asterisk. The bride was wearing some screen-printed t-shirt, jeans, and a veil made from cheesecloth asterisk. The groom was wearing a jean vest with no shirt underneath and torn jeans asterisk. The bride had met the groom just over three months prior, as the groom was still married to his first wife at the time. Divorce takes 90 days here, do the math. Asterisk. Most of the guests were dressed like they were in the middle of doing yard work. Asterisk reception was in the same area. Several cases of PBR and Miller Lite, supermarket pre-boxed cheese and cracker spreads, and a few Bojangles fried chicken boxes. Story 4. Oil town off the Gulf Coast of Texas. Biker wedding for a couple that had been together for decades already. Met up with her that morning to help carry liquor to the venue, which was the local VFW. We met in a parking lot outside some gas station. She's in a tank top, no bra. Her ball flying all over the place and she could give a nonsense. She pops open her trunk and hands me six Tide containers. Each is full of premixed shots. Okie dokie. Fast forward to the wedding itself. Roll up to the VFW. Bikes everywhere and me and my Honda sedan. I'm in slacks and a button down. I'm definitely out of place, but roll with it. Groom is in full patch at the altar bar, smoking when the bride walks in. 
She actually did have a dress, but joked about it being the first time she'd worn one in over 20 years. Rowdy as hell reception. Lots of fighting. Cops got called at least once. Groom was taken away in an ambulance because the best man had laced the candy with candy and didn't tell anyone. Good times down in Freeport. Story 5. I was a wedding DJ for years and I've seen a few things. Guests throwing up, trashy dancing. But the one that takes the cake is the full brawl that broke out at a very nice country club. This was pre-cell phone, so unfortunately I never got any video of this. The bride's brother and the best man did asterisk not asterisk like each other already, and to make matters worse. At the head table, the bride's brother takes off his tux jacket and shirt asterisk during dinner asterisk to reveal his wife beater t-shirt underneath. The best man comes over and reminds him where he is and the two of them exchange words. There's a little shoving and the BB is asked to get some air. Things are fine and later BB comes back during the dancing. Although at this point he's still not dressed. Whatever, people are dancing and having fun. At the end of the night, BB can't find his jacket and starts making some noise about it. He starts calling out BM because he thinks he took it. He's drunk and cursing up a storm and BM is asterisk done asterisk with him. BM walks up behind BB, taps him on the shoulder, and in the moment BB turns around, BM slugs him. And it begins. Everyone has their beer muscles on at this point and gets in on it. Groomsmen, bridesmaids, the hall manager tries to break it up and gets a stray hand to the face. The bride winds up hitting the deck and going full turtle. She was a larger woman and couldn't get up because of the fit of her dress. It was like watching a tornado that started on one side of the hall and was quickly moving my way. I raced to pack up my equipment ASAP and was getting my gear out to the car just as the police arrived. I didn't stick around to see what happened. I'm quite happy they paid me earlier in the evening. Story six. Ooh, I've got one of these, but it was a fake wedding. Unknown to the guests ahead of time. Many of the details are things we found out later. So the wedding, everything felt very tense, and groom looked like he might cry standing at the altar. Bride entered in a dress that didn't fit properly. It had a large, long skirt with hoop, but the dress was too short and the hoop was too big, so it say up on an angle and bounced around awkwardly as she moved. The ceremony itself seemed quite strained, and having recently been married ourselves, the wife and I noticed that the celebrant didn't say the specific line legally required for a wedding in Australia, and no paperwork was signed, also required in Australia. At the reception, almost all of Table 1, which had bride groom's families, turned out it was groom's family that left, left immediately after the reception started. Groom's dad was meant to pay for the bar tab, but did not do so before leaving. Bride and groom avoided each other apart from an incredibly awkward first dance. They separated weeks later, so flashing back a bit, bride and groom were quite young, but with bride several years older than groom. They'd been dating for a while, and a lot of people in our circle of friends had been getting married. Bride was very set on marriage, and groom proposed willingly. As time went on, groom was getting cold feet. He didn't want to break up with bride, or even necessarily to call off the engagement, but wasn't ready to be married. Bride was not pleased and pressured Groom to continue. Groom's parents were in very poor health at the time, and when Groom tried to say he wasn't ready again, Bride started to harass his parents about him trying to back out. Groom foolishly agreed to go ahead with the wedding in order to stop this harassment. Bride was still not happy with Groom's attitude and asked the celebrant to come talk to them, hoping he would talk Groom around. Celebrant? being an absolute legend, and really just doing his job properly, refused to marry them once he was told that one party was unwilling, offering the compromise that he could officiate a commitment ceremony, which is not legally binding. Bride took him up on this offer, but insisted on not telling anyone and pretending it was a proper wedding. In Australia, some paperwork needs to be filed 30 days in advance, so there was no time to get an alternative celebrant, and there were evidently a lot of deposits which were not refundable so close to the event. Story 7. Half Mormon, half not Mormon wedding. The Mormon half was ultra-Mormon. The non-Mormon half was a good amount recovering addicts. The mother got her daughter's attention by just standing in front of whatever she was looking at, including the groom, the photographer, the DJ. Didn't matter. Mom was also pretty high most of the wedding. Twenty-two people in the bridal party. Only two girls were the bride's bridesmaids from before she met the Mormons. They kept getting frustrated because the Mormon bridesmaids kept pulling the bride away from them whenever they saw them all together alone. No alcohol served, so the non-Mormon side went to the liquor store across the street and served their own. Cake smash fail. Went straight into the bride's hair. Mormon side started to talk nonsense about the drinkers, and so the drinkers tried to pick fights with the Mormons. 
Wedding ended early, lots of tears. Such a hot mess wedding. The couple are both dentists. Story eight. Probably going to get buried, but went to a fancy wedding at a beautiful venue. It was an incredible outdoor ceremony, with the reception inside a super fancy lakefront venue. All went well until the bride's dad stood up to give a toast. The bride's dad and her mother had been divorced since she was little, so at least 25, 26 years they've been divorced. The bride's side of the family is very well off, and with about 200 people in attendance, he essentially roasted the bride's mother for 10, 15 minutes. He was talking about how she used to fudge the tennis instructor he paid for, then he went down the list naming the guys she dated after him, how she couldn't hold a job and just used his money. The mom had her current husband there, and then he turned his attention to that guy and was roasting on him for being the flavor of the week, and how he won't be around when his daughter is back from her honeymoon. He then moved on back to the mother and really laid into her again. I mean, he was off the rails. It was like a comedy central roast of the bride's mom, but fueled by his apparent hatred for her. I had been drinking a lot, so at first I thought I was mishearing things, but the longer it went on, I was sure I wasn't. I have no idea how no one stopped this, but they literally let him go on until he was done uninterrupted. He did not mention his daughter or the groom once. He just flipping roasted his ex-wife the whole time. Story 9. Reception held in, essentially, a metal pole barn. While the DJ plays the wedding classic hits of Whose Bed Have Your Boots Been Under and Who's Cheating Who, the pour-out-the-water, poor air conditioning and insulation causes the guests to figuratively melt. Unfortunately, the wedding cake literally melts and the top two layers topple onto the floor. The cake is rebuilt into a franken-cake off of bits on the floor by a couple of guests hoping to save the bride trauma. Fortunately, only a handful of guests are served this cake before it is replaced with sheet cake. We sat at our school cafeteria-style tables and tried to drink away our misery one cup of bush light at a time, but the hand tap on the keg leaked like crazy requiring a full-body calisthenic workout to squeeze out a cup of foam every few minutes. Story 10. Week before the wedding, the bridegroom tried to get me in for a close relationship. Side note. I'm not even really friends with the bride. I'm friends with the bridal party, and we all work together, which is how I found myself joining the bachelorette party. I'm also the only one from out of town, so everyone left the hotel, after everyone saying they'd stay at the hotel when the party ends except for me and the bride. She had gotten horny and called her man. I was asleep at that point. The bride and I were in a double queen room. I wake up to the groom to be pestering me to join in. My car keys are missing. Found out later a friend took them because they were worried I'd drive home drunk, which is not something I've ever done so WTF. And now I can't run away to my car to avoid the bridegroom. They can't convince me to join, so they just start banging it out in the bed next to me. I've never prayed for death so much in my life. The reason they're getting married is because they're fudge buddies who got pregnant. They decided to start dating around month six of the pregnancy, mostly due to the groom dragging his feet. So the father of the bride flipping hates this guy. He was just pissed off the entire wedding. Both the bridegroom get beyond flipping drunk at the wedding and he's dry, jumping her on the dance floor. Father of the bridegroom get into a fight and the dad leaves. The oh no wedding was Tinkerbell themed. Story 11. Literal trashiest. My brother had his wedding up in the mountains outside next to a river. Everyone got extremely drunk and neglected to clean up all the barbecue platters from dinner, leaving it until the next morning. Anyway, me and my family and my brother and his wife were staying in a cabin on the property and we were woken up in the middle of the night in our drunken stupor to some loud sounds of something trying to get into the cabin. Me and my brother both armed look out the window and see the biggest black bear probably on earth jump into the back of his pickup truck and just start thrashing trash bags full of half-eaten barbecue and spreading trash everywhere. There was nothing we could really do but hope that no one was passed out outside. Eventually it went away and we went back to bed. The next morning it looked like a trash bomb went off. Literally all the trash from the dinner the night before was spread all over the entire venue and we had to pick it all up hung over as fudge. The bear even tipped over a full-size dumpster and spread that trash out too. It was a nightmare and I wanted to pass away. Story 12. I'm late to the party, but here goes. This took place in my home state of West Virginia. Firstly, it involves my brother and his on-again, off-again girlfriend, Crystal. They dated for about six years and she cheated on him with a large portion of our friend group. One of the guys she cheated on him with was named Mikey. Another was Philip. My brother found out and they broke up. Fast forward a few months later and Crystal and Mikey are getting married. We're all friends and so we all go to the wedding and reception except for my brother for obvious reasons. 
As we're all getting plastered, Crystal comes by the table and I remark that I always thought she'd be my sister-in-law someday. She said she thought so too, but my brother didn't intervene at the wedding, which he wasn't at, when the preacher asked if anyone had cause to object. So yeah, she only married Mikey to try and get my brother to do some grand gesture. A bit later, Philip, drunk, accidentally bumps into a young child knocking him down. The child's father punches Philip in the face. Philip, confused and drunk, gets into his car and drives off. Crystal starts freaking out and crying. Mikey gets way too drunk and starts throwing up in the bathroom. Mikey's mom starts screaming at a very distraught Crystal to go and take care of him because that's her job now. Some other stuff happened, but I blacked out. I ran into Crystal a few years later outside of a Walmart. She was very pregnant. She told me her and Mikey got divorced and that she got remarried, but was most likely going to divorce the new guy too. Before I deleted Facebook, I remember her spamming her wall with cheesy memes about true love and commitment. Sometimes I miss West Virginia. In all fairness to my home state, I've attended some very classy weddings as well. This one just happened to be from the more stereotypical Appalachian crowd. Story 13. They met and married within months. He was 40 ES. She was upper 20 S or low 30 ass. I was shocked she was getting married. Shocked asterisk. This asterisk was the guy and shocked that I was invited. Felt like I had to go. He had like three preteens that did whatever they wanted and lived in the backwoods. Wedding was at his cabin property, potluck style. Wedding was just them standing in the yard. No seating, no grouping of friends or families or sides of an aisle, just hang out and watch them do their thing. No photographer. When they kissed, everyone pulled out guns and shot them off. I hadn't noticed the guns or seen that anyone was carrying, so it was a shock. Then the happy couple rode off on an ATV into the woods for a victory lap. They came back and we all ate swamp people food and everyone was sloshed. I left early with a friend and on the drive home we were like, so, what the fudge was that? They obviously divorced shortly after. Story 14. Okay, kinda hybrid. My girlfriend's cousin was getting married. The father of the groom was head of the local United Auto Workers. The union guys passed the hat and were asterisk, very asterisk, generous. The reception had 450 guests of two extended families, working class Polish and Irish. It was held in the grand ballroom of a very prestigious hotel. Problem is, the high-spirited crowd wasn't exactly grand ballroom material, even before the asterisk five-hour asterisk open bar. People were dancing on the tables, including a woman who must have been near 80 who nonetheless wound up and kicked a glass that ricocheted off a guy's forehead. I watched this happen. And hours before the event was supposed to end, the general manager and a security team showed up and said the crowd was destroying the facility, and we all had to leave. The father of the bride took over 100 pass away hards up to the dance club on the roof, paid a $20 cover charge for each of us, and handed a wad of $100 bills to the bar manager to open the bar. So asterisk well-funded asterisk trashy, BTW, this was my first wedding. Story 15. I went to a wedding for a couple who had graduated high school literal days prior to the ceremony. The groom was enlisted so they wanted to get married and move together before he was deployed. Some combination of the couple's parents were doing shots when I arrived and were drunk before the ceremony. Someone's mother was crying and not in a happy way. My favorite parts were when the groom said, Your eyes are like Blue Glacier Gatorade during his vows. And when he shouted, Hell yeah! When asked, do you take this woman to be your wife? I think they made it less than a year before she had an affair, and they aired all the dirty details out on Facebook. Story 16. I was visiting my cousin's sister. She took me to her friend's wedding. A small ceremony with very few people. Most of them were family members of bride and groom. The bride's father probably didn't like the groom. They started arguing in the middle of the wedding, then started fighting. They were rolling on the ground and punching each other. The bride was in tears, and half of the guests were laughing and cheering and the other half were standing like idiots, me included. Soon they got exhausted and stopped fighting, and after some times, the wedding continues. Edit. My cousin's sister. It was a typo. It was supposed to be my cousin's sister. I've corrected it now. Edit too. Looks like I've created more confusion. She is my cousin's stepsister. I usually introduce her as my cousin's sister. Story 17. I did catering. I ran the FOH, and this included setup. Everything was from a rental company, including the linens so tablecloths and, in this case, napkins. The family was Russian and they were insane. The whole event was super swanky reception considering they chose BBQ as their preferred entree, but we played our roles. They busted out a sword to open booze with. They busted my boss's cow and the worst, 
The worst was when a lady went and urinated in the woods, despite a perfectly good and accessible bathroom readily available, used the linen napkin as TP, and tried to hand it back to me when she was done. Thankfully, my boss was as horrified as I was. To this day, I can't even... Story 18. Okay, so our friends got married about eight years ago. Because she was dual citizen, American-Canadian, and the hubby was Canadian, they decided to have a fun Vegas wedding before the real and very elegant wedding the following year so that he could get started on the residency in U.S. So the wedding was all friends aside from one of her kids. It was a costume wedding, so we all wore basically fun Halloween costumes. I was a slutty magician's assistant, hubby was Spock. They had a dodgeball team and some other fun guests. The bride's son brought his friend, both of age, and each one wore a giant boob costume to make a perfect pair. The bride was Elvira and the groom Nacho Libre, and their costumes were so good and homemade. The venue was one of the chapels, and they had a Tom Jones as the officiant. The son and his friend, the giant ball, walked her down the aisle and stood on either side of the little stage area and swayed in time to the Tom Jones song the impersonator was performing before doing the ceremony. We all ate candy brownies and were plenty drunk for the wedding, and it steamed live to friends and family who weren't attending, but they had no idea that it was a costume wedding or that giant ball were going to walk the bride down the aisle. We had a limo take us all to a tiki bar where we drank way too much then to a steakhouse for a late dinner at Caesar's Palace. So many people stopped us on the strip for photos. It was a trashy wedding, but honestly the most fun wedding I've ever been to. The real wedding was a year later, and a gorgeous affair with the ceremony in a castle followed by a great dinner and dancing at a banquet hall. But honestly, the Vegas wedding was just so epic. I'll never forget it. Story 19. Gonna have to go with my own here. Everything was cheap and immediate family and friends. Guest list of maybe 30 people, Max. Small fun party. My loud, dramatic, trashy cousin was outraged that her and her seven kids, sweets do bad things, Mimke, were not invited. So they badgered and badgered my mother, who badgered and badgered me to let them attend until I did, then never showed up to spite me. At my reception, people fed me drinks and shots until I was mortal. At midnight, someone convinced me to ditch my own wedding reception to go get pizza. 2 a.m., my husband had to convince me to go home, and I was loud as hell in waking up my neighbors. Spent 2 6 a.m. throwing up, no alluring time. Spent the first day of married life hungover and in the doghouse with the mister. Story 20. Ah, finally, a perfect place to vent on a recent event. Long story short, a cousin of mine was attending his grandfather's funeral. Our moms are sisters, and this was his dad's father, so who I have no blood relation to. He ends up texting me later on like, guess what? Now that side of his family has always been on the stranger side, I have plenty of stories we were told growing up, so I was like, Lay it on me. After the funeral ended and his uncle, the only surviving son, gathers everyone to make an announcement before everyone leaves. His GF comes walking out dressed in a white dress and they announce they are getting married right there and now. Lola. Story 21. On the wedding day before the ceremony, I was alarmed as I held the bride's veil back as she took a hit from her bong, a new bridesmaid duty for me. Meanwhile, my husband got trapped in our room as the groom and his party held up the ceremony so they could all do lines of cola in the hallway. Why? We really started to feel bad when we saw how much the photographer was panicking, trying to corral the bridal party and the family members to get the photos that she was expected to take, but everyone kept running off to secretly, read obviously, do lines. Eventually, the whole timeline of the wedding was in shambles because the photography took hours, they only stopped because they lost the sun. You could tell that the DJ was lost because they were playing shout during the dinner, poutine plus finger food, and the bride and groom were still nowhere to be seen. All the elderly folks and people who weren't partaking in sweets started to leave. It was getting late. There had been not a toast, not a speech, not a dance, and this bizarre unsettling feeling when the guests of honor are absent at their own party. Now the bride was running around barefoot on gravel roads, trying to say goodbye to her relatives through car windows before they drove off. That's when my husband overheard the groom saying, That's it, fellas. I've done all my responsibilities for the night, time for eight-foot chains. We assumed this was candy lingo, but literally no one has ever heard of this expression before. Please comment if you have heard this before. Sadly, the couple accidentally got pregnant on their honeymoon and were separated three weeks after their child was born. They had been together since middle school, but now they are so awful and toxic to each other. It is very sad. Candy is a hell of a candy. Story 22. 
In his speech, the best man drunkenly claimed that he had called dibs on the bride first, but the groom told him that he was, in fact, going to be the one take her home that first night they all met. Three groomsmen were on LSD. One got punched by the groom for missing pictures. All bridesmaids left an hour into the reception to go to the casino. All of this went down in front of the bride's extremely Southern Baptist family. It's a memory I deeply cherish, Edit. Oh, another one. The groom got so drunk he put himself in his mom's car and told her to take him home. Without the bride! Needless to say, that marriage didn't last long. Story 23. I was 15. I went with my mom and grandma to my cousin's wedding. We drove for half an hour into the mountains, to a home still heated and cooking off a wood stove. The wedding was in the front yard. Groom and groomsmen were wearing blue jeans and leather vests, no shirts. We arrived just a few mine before the ceremony. Groom and groomsmen were hanging out by the arch, crushing bush light and rocking out to ACDC. The pit was chained up to the tree not far away. I don't recall chairs. I think it was just a stand around and watch affair. The pregnant bride walked down the aisle smoking a cane. The groom did have the decency to set his beer down for this part, at least. After the vows, the new bride and her groom shotgunned a beer together and then drove off in a beat-up old jacked-up Ford with a blow-up doll strapped to the back and about a 30-pack worth of beer cans dragging behind it. When we got in the car, Mom said, Well, you won't forget that. She was right. I never have. Story 24. Just attended a wedding with my S.O., who only knew the bride because they'd met on a dating website before he met me, had only met in person asterisk once asterisk prior to the wedding, and had remained friends on social media for several years. She said he was one of her best friends. There were very few guests at the wedding, and he and I were the bride's only guests besides her parents, and the rest were the groom's family. We were also one of the only ones to bring a gift, a very nice bottle of bourbon, and my S.O. had to keep dodging the question of how they knew each other. The wedding itself was actually pretty cute and intimate, and the bride and groom were very nice people, and I talked to the groom and his friends quite a bit and had a great time. I just couldn't wrap my mind around asterisk why asterisk my S.O. and I were even invited. It was weird to me, not from a place of jealousy. I just couldn't understand why the bride didn't have better friends to invite than a Tinder swipe from eight years ago. Story 25. OMG, it's my own wedding that was the trashiest. Oh. Got married in Aug of 2015 to the father of my two kids. I proposed. I bought very cheap rings and outfits for the kids and the marriage license. We were going to get married in the courtyard of our apartment complex, but it was looking like rain. So we called the campground a couple of kiwums away and asked if we could use their covered pavilion for free. They said yes. We had very few guests, our immediate family, and that was almost it. Except we knew we'd have a honeymoon one night in a nice hotel, and our parents were responsible for our kids for the day and night. So we also invited our candy dealer and his GF and got L it. The campground wanted photos for publicity in exchange for using the venue, so we did have nice photos. Or they would have been nice if we both hadn't been stoned off our asses and ruining them by making the dumbest faces. After a very quick ceremony in an undecorated open-air wooden structure, we all headed to White Spot for dinner. The honeymoon consisted of us getting wasted drunk, me wandering around town swigging from bottles in my wedding dress, being just stupid drunk and being told I couldn't walk through the drive through at McDonald's anymore at 2 a.m. resulting in me screaming I'd burn it all down, seeing a cop during my outburst and shutting up, then finally us kicking our candy dealer and his GF out of our hotel room at 3 a.m. so we could consummate our marriage. But my now ex-husband fell asleep before it happened. It didn't even last six months for other reasons, but man, I was on some unhealed cow back then. Story 26. Went to a biker wedding in Alabama once. Sweets all around during the ceremony. Read their vows from a motorcycle magazine and poured Moyer oil over each other. All in the backfield of some clubhouse where some members for sure lived full time. Also went to a separate wedding in Tennessee, mainly out of curiosity of how these two ever found someone to marry them. Had talks with a friend for weeks before how we expected something to be off or some kind of wedding chaos so we went for the thrills. Didn't find out that day, but a few weeks later it came out that he was already married and didn't know he couldn't marry more than one person. This was a small town and his wife was bound to find out. Not sure how he got away with it for as long as he did TBH. Story 27. My sister's second wedding... She married a guy that we lovingly called Peanut Brain. He was a moron. None of us were thrilled about this marriage. We all made the asterisk long asterisk peach drive to Tulsa for this wedding. The wedding was in a church cult HQ. I don't know what to call it. 
There were church pews, a cross, a music stand for a pulpit, Alaska, 47s in frames on the walls all around the church. Yes, they were real. The preacher looked like the love child of Ted Bundy Jeffrey Dahmer. He was in robes, like a minister, and was wearing a rifle on his back. He kept it on during the ceremony. This guy talked more about consummating the marriage during his speech than anything else, to the point that he forgot about their vows and had to back up. During all of this, Peanut Brain's daughter was running around the church, then proceeded to throw up all over the aisle and one of the pews. We are finally reaching the end of the ceremony, but not quite pronounced husband and wife. When the doors at the back of the church are banged open and people shuffle in, the preacher stops mid-sentence and hollered out, Hey, we'll be done in a few. You're early. Wait for me in the lobby. Then continues on with the husband-wife declaration. When it was all finally over, he rushed us all to the lobby so he could get to his next wedding. The people that had interrupted the ceremony were waiting in the lobby when we walked in. I cannot explain to you the level of backwoods inbreeding that greeted us in the lobby, but it was obvious. The bride was very young and very pregnant. The groom was much older, like in his late thirties. What I assume was the mother of the young bride ushered them into the church and signed some papers, and the ceremony began. I guess she wanted to get that girl married before the baby arrived, which looked like it would happen any minute. I swear, that was the most obscene situation I've ever been in. It became one of those things that my family refuses to even speak about, lol. Story 28. This took place in rural Tennessee, when the bride and groom-to-be went to meet the efficient, a friend of her sister's, at the biker bar owned by said efficient, one of the patrons, upon finding out the groom was from Scotland, ran up and grabbed him by the balls. A week before the wedding, the officiant phoned the bride and asked if it was okay if they changed the ceremony from Saturday to Sunday because there was a poker run. The bikers would visit several bars in succession and pick up a card at each bar. Whoever has the best hand at the end would win some money. On the Saturday, and she had to run the bar for the bikers. The ceremony was supposed to be held at a lake next to the bar, a property also owned by the bar owners. Unfortunately, that Sunday it was raining, so it wasn't possible to do the ceremony by the lake, so it was suggested that the ceremony be held in the pavilion behind the biker bar, where there happened to be about 30 bikers having a BBQ. This also included the woman who had grabbed the groom by the balls since she lived next to the bar. She brought a boombox with some bagpipe music for the ceremony. Turns out her dead husband had been Scottish, so she was very nostalgic and wanted to help make the day nicer for the couple. After the ceremony was completed, the couple and their guests, of which there were only two, were invited to join the biker BBQ and offered a gallon of homemade dandelion wine for toasts, rather than the bottle of champagne they'd brought with them. Much merriment ensued. The food was great, and the bride and groom shared their wedding cake with the bikers. This was my wedding. We celebrate our 25th anniversary in a few months. Story 29. I worked at a high-end golf club in Seattle that held extravagant weddings on a regular basis. This wedding in Samoa is perhaps my favorite. All of the guys wore lime green vests and snapbacks that matched. As mentioned in the contract, the wedding party must order food from the golf club's restaurant. Instead, they order Domino's, and the pizza delivery man serves them pizza while they sit in a beautiful restaurant. Right before the marriage, the bride and broom groom had a fist fight which caused the ceremony to be postponed until bruises could be concealed with cosmetics. A live band was engaged to perform at the event, but they were not fed. The lead vocalist decides to speed down the hill during their first break to fetch a drink. Story 30. The bride looked like an ogre and behaved like one too, showed her husband the middle finger in front of the guests, and called him names. Her relatives looked like the family tree of The Hills Have Eyes and came in sandals, the toenails I've seen that day are etched in my memory. And not even nicer everyday clothes. We had a barbecue in their garden with paper plates and plastic forks. One or two salads that basically consisted of mayonnaise and noodles and a basket with dry baguette. Their house was a mess. The relatives of the bride gave us major side eyes once they've heard that we and two other guests of the groom studied at universities. The groom was just an acquaintance of ours, and we haven't seen him in years, but went anyways to the wedding because he was a nice guy. Poor dude got lots of gray hair since he's with her. Unfortunately, they already have three or more kids and all come after their mother. It was like a bad Adam Sandler movie where you looked into the stroller and say, Ah, oh, oh my God. We haven't seen him since the wedding. Story 31. It goes as classy and as well as can be expected of Junior enlisted with no sense or money. Woo. Well, here she goes. Many years ago, I was in the Navy stationed with the Marines. 
A friend of mine assigned to another platoon started seeing this girl he met at a strip club where she waitressed. As it turns out, she was in the process of divorcing one of the guys in the groom's platoon because she was caught cheating, and it was very well known. That the groom didn't get his peach whooped is a miracle beyond explanation. Fast forward a month, and the groom wants to get married. I told him it was a bad idea. Our other friend said it was a bad idea. His platoon asked Jat and platoon commander told him it was a bad idea. So did the company commander, all of the Navy leadership at the battalion, and the battalion chaplain. His company commander asterisk even threatened to restrict him to the barracks asterisk if it would keep him from getting married. Spoiler, it didn't. So he asks me to come to his wedding and stand up in it. He said it's in a small secular chapel in a nearby town. He also said he'd pay for dinner afterward and all the booze I could drink, so I immediately said yes and put my dress blues into the on-base dry cleaning shop. One of our mutual friends got the same offer and also immediately agreed, largely for the same reasons. I asked the groom who would be attending, and he said that since it's last minute, we were deploying within 90 or so days of the wedding date, and not being done in a church, none of their family members would be able to make it. Fast forward to the day of the ceremony. Myself and the other friend are trying to find where the fudge this chapel is using some printed map quest directions and an outdated atlas. By now, we are thoroughly in a residential neighborhood and have gone up and down one road so much that someone comes out of their house to ask us if we are lost. We explain what we are looking for, and with a wry smile, they point us down the same road. But this time, we need to keep our eyes peeled for the license plate sign advertising weddings set in the yard of a regular house. We pull up and park in front of a standard one-story ranch-style house with an attached garage, get out, and ring the doorbell. A very nice older lady greeted us and directed us to a side door on the garage. We go inside, and it is clearly a garage that is in regular use, but they tried to cover up all the tools and store junk with satin fabric and fake flowers, with a dirty green indoor-outdoor carpet rolled out to cover the oil stains on the concrete. The blushing bride and groom are already there. She in a low-cut sundress that left nothing to the imagination no matter how much you wanted it to. And he in some ill-fitting dress blues, because he forgot to get them cleaned and pressed and had to borrow his roommate's uniform, speaking to the efficient who smells of booze and is unsteady on his feet. It's eleven in the morning. The older lady is his wife, and she has busted out a giant shoulder-mounted camcorder from the 80s in addition to her ancient film camera and is cheerfully flitting about getting behind-the-scenes photos. The efficient stumbles over to my friend and I and says that he would like to do a rehearsal or two before the guests arrive. The groom chimes in that we were basically all present and accounted for except for his dad who decided last minute to fly in and try to talk him out of this insanity. He would be arriving in about 20 minutes, and so we rehearsed. With me playing a groomsman, maid of honor, father of the bride, ring bearer and witness, and our friend filling in the other roles. Finally, it was time. His father had shown up and basically refused to speak to anyone. He sat in the furthest row of plastic lawn chairs he could to try and distance himself from this travesty. It did not work. The bride and groom took their places beneath the dented and tarnished second-hand aluminum archway covered in flowers. The efficient, having refreshed himself discreetly, is now more unsteady than ever and his wife, videographer, is running around filming in what should be regarded as the asterisk, real asterisk first use of the shaky cam technique, while also refusing to use the zoom button, and instead getting all up close and personal to everyone. The ceremony was brief and forgettable, with most of the officiant's words slurred quietly, like he was trying to hide his actions from a god who likely won't take kindly to these sorts of shenanigans. Then they slow danced to a popular country song at the time that had clearly been recorded off the radio using a cassette, and before we knew it, it was time to get drunk in a knockoff Olive Garden. During the meal, the friend and I snuck off to draw wedding-related phrases and whatnot on the groom's car using white shoe polish. I took one side and our friend took the other, but halfway through I realized his wedding bells with bows looked a little suspiciously like balls and pubes and figured we should probably make it match. So I altered mine a little. We may have gotten a little carried away and less subtle with the dicks and balls we started drawing. But what can you expect? We were drunk sailors who had a fantastic excuse to draw something lewd on our friend's car. Did you guys know there's a difference between the white window markers and white shoe polish? We didn't, but the groom sure learned. It took about two months of repeated washes before it came off, and whenever it rained, you could still see the outlines. So we deployed, and she cheated on him and stole all his money, just like she had done to her previous two husbands, and then filed for divorce just before we came home, which is what everyone who warned him about her had said. 
You know, the military usual for when it comes to dumbass E-nothing enlisted marriages. To this day, it remains a memorable ceremony, especially since it was the first wedding I ever attended as an adult.